Hey guys, it's Jay, and in this video, we're going to cover 10 techniques for getting better landscape photos. Now, these tips will help you capture stunning and dramatic landscapes that will level up your game each and every time you go out to take photos. All right, guys, so tip number one is finding the best time of day or lighting conditions. Now, the time of day plays a huge role in landscape photography. The golden hours, for example, are just after sunrise and just before sunset, and they are considered to be the best times to take landscape photos. Golden hour light has a glowing, warm feeling to it and because the sun is at such a low angle in the sky it creates amazing shadows and highlights resulting in deep colors and awesome 3d pop now tip number two choosing the right lens for the most part using a wide angle lens is ideal for landscape photography because it allows you to capture the vastness of the scene in front of you for that epic look now you can certainly use non wide angle lenses for landscapes as well but in general i would recommend a wide angle lens for example my preferred wide angle lenses are currently the sony 16 to 35 millimeter f4 lens and the Sony 20 millimeter F 1.8 G lens when using my full frame Sony a 7 IV. Now when I'm using my crop factor camera, which is the Sony a 6400, uh, I tend to grab the Viltrox 13 millimeter F 1.4 lens for that ultra wide angle view. Similar to using the right lens, using the right aperture is also critical with landscape photography. For landscapes in general, you usually want everything to be sharp from the front all the way to the back. So for this, you will want a higher number aperture like f8, f11, or even f16, for example. You will also want to focus on the key subject for the maximum depth of field. When it's a standard scene with no real subject, I would recommend focusing about one third of the way up from the bottom as a good starting point, but be sure to experiment with a few shots at different focus points at each location, and then you can choose which one's the best after the fact. Now the next tip, use a tripod. A tripod is essential for landscape photography. It helps to keep the camera steady and reduces camera shake, ensuring that your photos are as sharp as possible. I have a really high quality mini tripod, as you could see here, and I also have a full-sized heavy duty tripod that you can see here. Now, in addition to using the tripod, I highly recommend also using the camera's self timer feature. So this way you have a few seconds for the camera to settle after you press the shutter button. This is particularly important when using slower shutter speeds as even the slightest camera shake can result in a blurry photo. So the next tip, you wanna pay attention to the foreground. The foreground or lower portion of the frame is an important element of landscape photography and should not be ignored. Adding interest to the foreground such as grass, rocks, a tree, or even a building can help create depth in the photo and draw the viewer's eye into the scene. So the next tip, experiment with different compositions. Experimenting with different compositions is a great way to create unique and interesting landscape photos. For example, try using the rule of thirds, lead in lines, or symmetry to create balance and structure in your landscape photos. Another thing you guys can do is use filters. Polarizing filters and neutral density filters in particular are great for landscapes. Polarizers can help enhance the colors and reduce glare, while ND filters can help increase exposure length by slowing down the shutter speed, which will allow for motion blur awesome for water shots. All right, guys, another thing you need to keep in mind is adjusting your exposure. Correctly adjusting the exposure is crucial for landscape photography. An overexposed photo will lose detail in the highlights, like the clouds and stuff, while an underexposed photo will lose detail in the shadows. So depending on what mode your camera is in, you can adjust the exposure compensation one way or the other as needed. If adjusting the exposure alone will not get you the results you're looking for, then the more advanced HDR method can be used. And I have a dedicated video on that linked below in the description area if you're interested. Now, another key element to getting the best possible landscape photos is to edit your photos. Now by editing, what I mean is bringing your photos into Lightroom, for example, and you can adjust the exposure, contrast, color, saturation, sharpness, distortion, imperfections such as dust in the sky or an object you might wanna clone out, for example. Now, if you want the most latitude for your editing, I highly recommend shooting in raw quality as opposed to JPEG quality. If you don't plan on doing that much editing after the fact, then JPEG will be fine. But again, for the most possible latitude, 
raw quality is the way to go. So lastly, you really just gotta get out there and practice. The more you practice, the better your landscape photos will be 100%. All right guys, I really hope these 10 tips will help you take better landscape photos and please hit that subscribe button and thumbs up if you found this video helpful. All the best to you and yours and I will catch up with you guys next time. Take care.